Do you want to be able to easily predict future revenues from right inside your HubSpot portal? Well, the forecasting tool is exactly what you need. In this video, we're going to walk you through everything it can do and exactly how to use it. Welcome to HubSpot Hacks, where we help you get more out of HubSpot. The forecasting tool is going to be available to anybody that has a sales hub professional or enterprise license. And I will warn you, it does have a little bit more of a learning curve than a lot of the other HubSpot tools, but don't worry, we're going to walk you through it all today. So let's dive in. So if you're new to HubSpot, the first thing to understand about forecasting is that it is going to be based on your deals, also known as opportunities that are going to be stored inside of HubSpot. So whenever you have an open sales opportunity, you're going to create a deal and associate it to the contact and company records that are relevant. And so in this case, we're looking at just the deals that we are going to close next month or have a close date of next month. So we've got two deals in here. We're recording this in January of 2023. So you can see we've got two deals that have a close date of February in 2023. So these are the two deals that our forecasting is going to be based on when we look at the forecasting tool. So this is going to be our deals view. If we want to go to forecasting, it's going to be under this sales dropdown and forecast. And the first thing that you're gonna notice here is we've got two tabs across the top. So there's two ways to do forecasting inside of HubSpot. The first one is going to be based on deal stage. So when we looked at that deals pipeline, we noticed we've got more than one stage here. This is all the deals I had it filtered for just next month earlier. We've got different stages for each of our uh, for each of our pipelines that represent milestones in our sales process. So the first way we can forecast is based on those deal stages. The second way is going to be forecast category, which I'll we'll talk about here in a second, but it allows you to forecast across pipelines more easily and have a little bit more control over your forecasting. So deal stage is kind of an entry level forecasting, great place to start out if you want something more sophisticated or if you want to be able to forecast across pipelines, then you're going to want forecast category. So we'll start with going over the deal stage forecasting and they have this little help icon in the top right that helps you understand which users of your HubSpot system will actually show up in forecasting. So make sure you understand this. Everybody that you want to be able to forecast around, so the people that are assigned as owners to your deals, they need to have a paid sales seat. They need to be a part of a team and they have to have forecast permissions turned on. So this little help icon will teach you how to do each of those things if you're not familiar with that. Then when you scroll down, depending on kind of last time you visited the tool, you're probably going to see something that looks like this. So across the top here, we have some analytics, some high level analytics across all of our users and teams. And then we've got our teams here. With the deal stage forecasting, you do have to select your pipeline. You can only do your forecasting around one pipeline at a time. So today we're gonna to focus on this demo sales pipeline. If you wanna be able to combine forecasts across pipelines, again, that's where the forecast category comes in. And we've got our close date, so we're focused on next month. Go down to our teams. In this case, we really only care about our sales team. So if we click on sales team, it's gonna allow us to drill down to the two users that are on our sales team, so we'll and myself. So in this view, the first thing you're going to notice is the goal attainment. So we've got a goal set for Will for $2,000 for next month. We don't have a goal set for me. I'll show you how to set a goal in just a second. The next one you're going to see is your total. So this is the total of all of the deals that are assigned to that user for that uh, within they have a close date within the time period that you have selected here. So in this case, Will has a has deals that total up to about 2,300, and I have a deal that totals up to 800 that are going to be closing next month. We currently have our forecasting set up based on the weighted amount. So if we go back to our deals. We'll notice that at the bottom of these each of these stages, we've set a weight or a likelihood of closing. So when a deal reaches presentation scheduled, the likelihood of closing is 60%. So you can set your forecasting up to show the weighted amount or the total amount. So we've got our weighted amount. So in this case, I've actually got a, one deal that's valued at $1,000, but it's sitting in a stage that's weighted at 80%. So it's showing me $800 for my total. The next one here is going to be our coverage ratio. So this is going to be um, the this total divided by the goal. 
So we've got, and it is looking at the weighted total here. You'll notice the pipeline coverage uh, number up here is higher because this is looking at the unweighted total. So um, that's going to be why you might see a discrepancy here if you do have this set up to show the weighted total. And I'll show you how to change that here in a second if you would prefer to just show the total without having any of the weights. Then as we scroll over here, what we're going to see is we're going to see the amounts, and in our case the weighted amounts, by each stage in that pipeline. So in this case, Will has one deal in the presentation scheduled stage, and I have one deal in the decision maker bought in stage. So you'll see all of the stages in your sales process here. And then you'll also see this forecast submission. So these numbers are all based on your deals. This forecast submission is based on a number that you put in here. So let's say Will has 2,300 worth of deals in here for next month, but he knows he's going to an event next month with a lot of low hanging fruit. And so he's actually gonna commit to his manager that he's going to have 5,000 close. So he's going to submit that forecast. That's what he thinks he's going to make. And so you can compare um, your kind of automated totals based on deals compared to what you have submitted as your forecast if you want to do that. And again, that'll roll up here. So if I would also, let's say I don't think I'm as good of a salesperson as Will, I'm only going to get 2,500 I think this month. I'll submit that and it'll total up for me across the top. So I mentioned I'd show you how to set goals. So we've got a goal for Will, but not for myself. So there's a couple ways to set goals. One of them is if there is no goal set, you can just hover over this and click on setting a revenue goal. The other way is to come up here to your settings. You'll go to tracking and analytics and goals. So they are doing some work on goals right now. So this may look a little bit different depending on when you're watching this video, but it should be a pretty similar process. So we've already got a goal for Will, so we'll set a goal for myself. We're just gonna hit create goal at the top. You can create lots of different goals inside of HubSpot. And if you have this beta turned on, you can create all kinds of goals. But for forecasting, we're gonna wanna set a specific type of goal called a revenue goal. And that's gonna be from this template. So we're gonna create from template, and hit next. We'll just call this test goal for now. It's gonna be a sales goal and it's going to be a revenue goal. So this is the category and type that you're gonna to want to set goals if you're gonna use for the forecasting tool. We'll hit next. We do intend to forecast for that goal. We're gonna select, select the users that that goal applies to. So in this case, it's me. It's gonna be for 2023 and your goals, revenue goals do have to be for a specific pipeline. So if you've got multiple pipelines, you do have to break your revenue goals across pipelines. That is true even if you're using forecast categories rather than deal stages. So you always have to select a pipeline. In this case, we're working with this demo sales pipeline. We'll hit next. This pipeline is set up to be forecasted monthly. I'll show you how to change that here in a second. So it is gonna ask for a goal for each month. If your goal stays the same throughout the year and you don't wanna type in that goal for every month, there is a neat little trick. You can just hit this uh, checkbox to the left here and hit apply targets. And let's say we want my goal to be 1,000 a month. So I'm gonna apply that and you'll see we've got 1,000 a month for each of these. Let's say you've got some seasonality and we know that um, in December we expect a little more, so we'll bump that up to 2,000. Hit next. You can set up notifications around your goal if you'd like to. We'll just leave those off and hit done. Now if we go back to our forecasting tool, refresh it here and you'll notice that we've got uh, my goal of 1,000 for next month put in here. And so I can now see a coverage ratio number as well to see how I'm performing to that goal. As we close deals, this status bar will fill up. So if I were to close this deal, that deal, remember, is worth $1,000. This 800 is just the weighted amount. Once it's closed one, it'll reflect the total. And so it would show me that I have attained that goal of $1,000. So this is the deal stage forecasting. For forecast category, it looks similar but slightly different. So with forecast category, what we have is we have a property on every deal record that allows us to select a category. You can identify what those categories are, but if you're just getting started, I really recommend using the defaults from HubSpot, which are gonna be pipeline, best case, and commit. 
And again, you can do this for one pipeline or the nice thing about using forecast categories is you can have it forecast across, category, across pipelines for you. It'll total up your goals for each of your pipeline and all of the deals in each pipeline based on the category that's selected on those deals. So again, the screen's gonna look very similar. We've got our goal attainment, we've got our total, our coverage ratio, and then rather than having deal stages, we have those categories and we can still submit forecasts here on the side. This is also a great tool to use in your coaching conversations if you're a sales manager when you're doing your coaching with your sales reps because you can easily view the deals. So if I wanna see all of Will's deals, I can hit view deals here or I can go to any of these categories and hit um, this number of deals at the bottom and that'll expand. So I'm gonna see all of Will's deals here. So it's gonna show me that Will's got one deal for February. It's gonna show me the forecast category. So our category in this case is best case, the name of the deal, the total value, so this isn't the weight of the amount, this is the total value of the deal and what stage it's in. It's also gonna show you whether the next step property is being used and if it is, what's in that property. So next step is a default property on all of your deals. Good idea to coach your sales reps to always have a next step on the deal. So this is a great way to have coaching conversations. So we're gonna come in here and say, you know, hey Will, I noticed that your goal is 2,000. It looks like you're probably gonna hit it. We've got uh, 2,300 in here, but you've submitted a goal of 5,000. So let's take a look and see what deals we have and, and see if we can move them forward. Let's view your deals. Okay, I see you've got a one, you've got one deal here. Your next step is to give a presentation on the, the 13th. Let's talk about what that presentation uh, is gonna look like and any needs that you have from me. So that's a way that you can have your coaching conversations. I'll pop open. You can also click on the deal to pop open that deal. And you can see here on the deal record, we have the properties on the left here and some of, one of those properties is that forecast category. So we can change this between all of these categories. So let's say I'm pretty sure this deal is gonna close. I'm gonna move that category to commit. And then this next step property is that one that shows on that deals view in the forecasting. So I'm gonna save that. Within the forecasting tool, there is also quite a bit of setup, right? We've got those categories we can change and we can change whether we want it to be, uh, whether we want those goals around a pipeline to be monthly or quarterly or annually. And we also have some automation around the forecast categories that we can do, as well as setting whether or not we wanna see the weighted amounts or the total amounts here. So all of those settings are gonna live in our settings icon here and under objects and forecast. So there's two tabs here. We've got the setup and the pipelines. This first tab is going to allow you to do a few things. So we can manage our forecast properties. So this is where I would change those categories. If I don't like that best case commit um, and pipeline categories, I can change those to custom uh, categories of my choosing. I can edit the columns that show up in my reporting tool. So let's say I've got a lot of categories, but I only want a few of them to show up in the forecasting tool. I can customize that here. This is where I change whether or not I'm seeing the weighted amount based on those deal stage weights or the total amount of the deals, just a simple drop down here. And if you want to have an indicator around somebody, um, so basically give somebody an alert when they haven't submitted a new manual forecast in a while, you can select that as well. This next tab here for our pipelines is gonna be primarily for the deal categories. So the deal categories are nice because we can automate them or override what the automation says. So most of them are gonna kind of start off automated. So what this is going to allow us to do is for deals in our demo sales pipeline, and we can do this for each pipeline here, we're gonna say if we move a deal to our appointment scheduled or qualified to buy stage, automatically set that forecast category to pipeline. If we move it to the presentation scheduled stage, we're gonna update it to best case. If we move it to decision maker bought in or contract sent, commit, and closed one is closed one. But as I just showed you earlier, when I opened up that deal record, a salesperson can also override that. So let's say that's got a uh, they've got a deal in the decision maker bought in stage, but they don't really think it's gonna close this month we're going and they want to then manually override that forecast category to pipeline. Or maybe they've got a deal and appointment scheduled, but they're pretty sure it's gonna close. They can update that deal category or that forecast category 
to commit to show the sales manager and reflect in the forecast that it's actually pretty likely that that deal is gonna close in that time period. So the automation gives you a nice starting point, but unlike when you're using just the deal stage forecasting, they can kind of manually adjust that forecast to make sure that it's an accurate representation of what we saw there. And the last thing that you can set up here is whether that forecast period is gonna be monthly, quarterly, or annually. So um, I showed you in the goals tool, when we went to the goal and we selected that pipeline, it asked us for a goal each month. That was because we have this set to monthly. If we updated it to quarterly, it would change how those goals are made and how that's represented in the forecast tool. So like I said, a little bit more of a learning curve, lots of settings with the forecast tool, but hopefully you can see that this is going to be a sales manager's best friend, especially if you have multiple salespeople, high volume of, dual, of deals, great way to see kind of what's coming in in future months or quarters. For more HubSpot tips, tricks, and how-tos, make sure you hit that subscribe button and check out the description below for a link to our HubSpot Hacks newsletter. See you next time.